Hey, do you like reverb? Of course you do. So today we're gonna look at the old David Bowie gated reverb trick. Or really, I should call it the Tony Visconti trick. He's the one who invented it. But hey, let's be real. The David Bowie reverb trick has a lot more of a clickbaity ring to it. Tony Visconti was the producer on David Bowie's Heroes album, and he had a brilliant idea one day while tracking vocals for Bowie. So he had one mic placed in front of David Bowie to sing into, as you do. And then he placed another mic like about five-ish meters away from him. And then a third mic, maybe seven to 10 meters away. So the latter two mics were there to capture kind of the sound of the room that David Bowie was singing in. But he had a gate in front of each of them. So as Bowie was singing softly, the gates would remain closed, getting him a fairly kind of close up and intimate sound. And as his dynamics would go up, the gates on those two mics would open and we would get a lot more of a grand kind of roomy sound. Genius. This resulted in this really cool and very dynamic kind of vocal sound. And if you've heard the track Heroes, you'll know how that sounds. Now, as the story goes, he originally did this because he only had 24 tracks to work with. It was the analog days. And the instruments for this track had already taken up 23 of those 24 tracks. So all he had was one track to lay down all the vocals for this very dynamic vocal performance by David Bowie. And this is how we dealt with that issue. Now, these days, of course, we don't have any of those limitations. We can have as many tracks and sends as we want, but it's still a really cool sound. And today I wanna to show you how to recreate that. Now, I should say that Eventide already has a plugin called T-Verb, which they made in collaboration with Tony Visconti that is basically designed to do exactly this. But on the other hand, it costs about $300 Canadian. So let's just use the reverbs and gates that we already have and a few sends to approximate this sound for considerably cheaper. So I got this project in front of me. This is my latest single that I just released in collaboration with Leah Keeley. And when you look at the vocal recording, you can see that it's very, very dynamic. So we have kind of quiet parts in the beginning, and at the end, it's just all out insanity, forte vocals the whole way through. When we recorded this track, we actually tried this technique. It worked really well, and we just mixed down the results onto a stereo track down here. For today's demonstration, I'm just gonna mute this, and I have recreated this trick using two tracks down here, which are labeled Vox Verb Near, Vox Verb Far. For now, just for y'all to hear this better, I have enabled solo in front, so we can hear the vocals more clearly, but still hear a bit of the instruments as well. I have a tutorial on this. If you don't know what it is, linked below. And if you don't use Reaper, well then, have fun turning your instruments down manually like some sort of a caveman. <laughs> So let's first hear the dry vocals without anything else. Let's get the fuck out of here And we'll be on the run For the rest of our lives So pretty dynamic on the verses And if we now kind of go towards the end, towards the climax of the song Crawling back to you And will we crash And will we burn And that's basically how it goes. Let's now look at the reverb structure and then we'll hear them in a second. So I have two tracks down here and both of them are receiving the signal from our vocal track at Unity Gain. And these are set not to post fader, which is the default, but to pre effects. I'm doing this because the key to this trick is to use the natural dynamics of a performance to generate different reverb sounds. But if we look at my vocal track, I of course have a vocal rider plugin on there as well as a compressor. So both of these are kind of controlling the dynamics of the performance where we obviously want as wide a dynamic range as we possibly can have. So by sending the signal pre-FX, I'm basically able to get around these plugins and go straight into my reverb without having to adjust my main vocals processing. And now let's look at the plugins that we have here. Shploops. So the top two plugins are on my Vox Verb Near, and the first one is just a little bit of EQ. This one is kind of trying to get less of the S-y region into my reverb. I just don't like the sound of S's going through the reverb. It has kind of a basilisk crawling through the pipes at Hogwarts vibe to it. And there's also just a very gentle low pass filter. And that's because in real life, if we actually had mics set up farther away from our singer, by the time the voice of the singer reached those mics, a lot of the high frequencies will have decayed. And then this is feeding into a reverb. Now I'm using the round reverb by Native Instruments. You can use any kind of reverb that you want. 
And actually, if you want to get close to kind of that Bowie sound, it's probably best to use like a convolution reverb or anything that sounds really natural and like a room. But this is one of the benefits of doing this the hard way. You get to kind of choose your own reverbs. And I've gone with a very spacey one for this track. I also have 15 milliseconds of pre-delay. One cool kind of rule of thumb to know is that every meter of distance introduces about three milliseconds of delay. Or if you use feet, one foot introduces about one millisecond. So if our mic was 15 feet or five meters away from our singer, the sound would arrive at that mic 15 milliseconds later than our main mic. And then the rest of it, I kind of dialed how I like it. This first reverb is a little more subtle, shorter decay, less diffusion, and even the size is a little bit smaller. And then I have the Vox Verb far track with these bottom three plugins on it. So we have a gate and I'll go through the gate settings in a second. We have more or less the same EQ, except that the low pass cutoff frequency is a bit lower at 2.4 kilohertz. And this one up top is 4.8 kilohertz. And the pre-delay on this one is set to 36 milliseconds. So that would mean that it's more or less 36 feet or 12 meters away. And you can play with these distances obviously, but do watch for phase issues or you can just kind of turn down the reverbs and try to place the phase shift somewhere where it sounds more pleasant. Now looking back at the gate, it is receiving our vocals pre-effects. And what I've done is set the RMS size quite high. And the reason for that is that I don't want kind of every little sudden increase in peak loudness, like we see right here, to just open the gate. Normally, of course, we deal with these using a compressor. Instead, I want the gate to basically analyze our sound in little chunks based on the RMS size. So kind of overall quieter phrases won't open the gate, louder overall phrases do. The attack is very slow, so the gate kind of opens softly, kind of fading into that bigger reverb sound. And I also have it hold itself open for 100 milliseconds so that it doesn't constantly kind of open and close really erratically. And then I have 100 milliseconds of release. Now, hysteresis, in case you don't know, is basically a relative value to our threshold. What this means in very simple terms is that my gate will open at minus 17.2 dB, but it won't close at minus 17.2 dB it would actually close at minus 23.2 dB. So the gate opens at the threshold value, but it closes at the threshold value plus the hysteresis value. So let's finally just see this whole structure in action. And that's basically how it works. On quieter phrases, we're just hearing one reverb and then on louder phrases, we're hearing both reverbs for a much larger sound. Now, of course, they're a bit loud right now because I just want you to be able to very clearly hear what's happening. But of course, we're gonna mix them down to be more subtle. Let's also listen to a bit of the end as well. So I really like this trick, especially for like a very dynamic vocal performance. And it's more natural as well, right? So imagine if you're in say, uh, the middle of a large parking lot, if you speak more quietly, your voice is gonna decay before it reaches all the walls and then back to you. But as your voice gets louder, you're gonna hear a lot more kind of reverb and echo coming back to you from the walls. So a regular send will just give you exactly as much reverb as the signal you are putting into it. But this trick can sound a lot more natural because you get to have a lot less reverb on the quieter bits and then a lot more on the louder bits. And of course you control the amount. That's just you mixing. Again, this is just the basic setup for the trick, but of course there's a lot more room for experimentation. Using different reverbs for flavors, so maybe using something like the Waves Abbey Road Chambers plugin to get that natural room sound, or even the East West Spaces plugin, which is very CPU intensive, but it sounds great and really, really natural or even something free like the Melda Productions Convolution Easy. You can also just try using more than two cents for more kind of layers of this. And by the way, if you want to check the song out, the link to that will be in the description. And I'd really appreciate it if you do. Take care of yourselves. And if you like these type of videos, let me know in the comments. Bye.